My name is Sean. I'm from Georgia. Uh, I'm a conservative Christian. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and that he died for you. Um, I'm a homeschooling father of four, and I'm also a retired 20-year uh, veteran uh, Air Force pilot. I have never voted for a Democratic presidential candidate in my life, but this year I'm voting for Biden because I think Trump is burning down the house, and I think we just need to get him out, put out the fire, and then start rebuilding. I want to talk about this first from a Christian perspective because I know many Christians support Trump simply because of the pro-life agenda. But I think it needs to be considered and understood that that is a transaction and it comes with a price. Um, and that price is hypocrisy. Right now, the evangelical community is supporting a man who uh, lies regularly, who's a bigot, who has normalized hatred. I mean, just read his tweets every day. Um, who is uh, a serial adulterer. And the list just goes on and on. And with that hypocrisy uh, comes people turning away from Christ. Our, our calling is to bring people to Christ and to live as a Christ-like example. And so I think that um, there's a big price to pay for that. How do you reconcile that? How do you rec reconcile having a pro-life agenda versus having someone in office who is completely and 100% um, incompatible with Christian values, well, I think you have to turn some of that over to God because God is responsible for the ends, but he calls us to be responsible for the means. Is it more important to legislate biblical principles, something that Jesus was never concerned with, or to be a, a Christ-like example, something that we are specifically called to do? We can't do both in this case. So um, the way I look at it, I'm responsible for the a means, God is responsible for the ends, and I'm not going to take a path that compromises my principles and do it while convincing myself that ultimately it serves God's purpose. I won't do it. And that's one of the, that's the Christian reason why I will not vote for Trump. Um, but then on top of that, just look at the secular reasons. Um, if you're a conservative, the party of Trump is no longer a conservative party. Con uh, conservative Christian, traditional conservative values, fiscal responsibility, free trade, small government, um, constitutional rule of law, uh, a strong foreign policy. Those things are undermined almost daily in the Trump administration. Think about uh, responsible fiscal policy. That was like the big thing when the Tea Party was was driving the conservative agenda and Obama was in office. And the Republican Party talked the talk and then they came into power. And for the first three years with the best economy in America's history, they ran up the deficit and they ran up the debt. When are you ever going to pay down the debt if not during the good times? You can't do it during the bad times. So now the national debt's $26 trillion. That's about $80,000 per U.S. citizen. And guess who has to pay that? Your kids and my kids. Um, what has Trump done successfully? He's convinced the world that he was this fantastic businessman and real estate uh, power broker who could make deals when in fact most of his businesses went bankrupt. His charity was a fraud. His university was a fraud. His books were ghost written by other people. His success is at being a con man and all you have to do is watch him look at him speak in public and you can realize very quickly that he is in over his head he doesn't know what he's talking about he speaks in vague generalities he's the kid who didn't read the book trying to convince you that he read the book he's winging it he's making it up as he goes and at the end of the day he gives you a great big enemy to hate that diverts all of your attention to uh, this enemy and and makes you forget that he was uh, a blundering fool and that's very unchristian in and of itself, all of this hatred. So, and speaking of enemies, how are you going to feel in this age when every month is like a new chapter of Revelation or a new level of Jumanji? If our commander in chief, who's a child, is in charge and Russia decides to take the rest of Ukraine or China decides to invade Hong Kong, or what if both happen at the same time? And now we've got a commander in chief who doesn't even take his uh, daily intel brief, but a couple times a week or a few times a month, doesn't listen to his generals, and publicly says that he's smarter than them, doesn't listen to his intelligence uh, briefs or his intelligence people. That, this should scare you. I mean, it scares me. And with 20 years in the Air Force, they always told us to like watch the leaders um, who you liked and you didn't like and, and try to learn from them. I have never, ever run across somebody who is as terrible a leader as Trump is. So in short, I'm not going to vote for Trump because he scares me. I don't trust him to serve anybody but himself. And I believe he makes a mockery of the Christian faith and turns people away.